Welcome, spiritual warriors. Good evening, Hare Krishna. Welcome to Spiritual Warriorship. We read and discuss from books by His Holiness Bhakti Tirta Swami. We are presently in um, Reflections, no, Spiritual Warrior, Spiritual Warrior 4. And we completed um, the chapter on depression as of our last personal being here class. And tonight, as I always say, we're starting on a new adventure, a new chapter. And it's chapter six, entitled Addiction and the Process of Recovery. We know that this re Spiritual Warrior 4 is subtitled Conquering the Enemies of the Mind. And if you've been with us for some time, we have dealt with just with all the enemies that may come into the mind. He tells us what they are, what they do, how we feel, how we act, how we behave. And then he always gives us solutions, techniques, technologies. I hope these have been helpful to you who have been coming on a regular basis. And even if you haven't, I hope this is helpful to you as you're here. This chapter for me, well, they're all interesting, but I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to go ahead with it. But after reading it twice, I am, I'm, I'm just almost, I won't say amazed, but intrigued by how Bhaktivedanta Swami encourage us towards spiritual growth and advancement to reach the point of we're ready to go back home to Godhead and know who God is, who we are, and how we can be better persons in higher, and in higher consciousness. So I want you to listen carefully um, and see. It's not just about alcoholics. Okay? Um, anybody in the chat room? I'm not, I, I can't get in right now. You can't? Oh, okay, that's interesting. Okay, Shallowgram's not able to get in the chat room, but keep coming, keep writing, and we'll see what happens. He opens, Bhakti Chitta Swami opens chapter six, as he does most chapters, with something from the Sastra. I'm going to give you what it is and the uh, where it is and I always encourage you in your spare time or make time to follow through see the purport by Srila Prabhupada because they're always growth inspiring or even read a little bit more this um, Sastra is Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 4 chapter 20 verse 5 and it states, those who are in full knowledge of the bodily conception of life, who know that the body is composed of nescience, ignorance, desires, and activities resulting from illusion, do not become addicted to the body. And thus we begin chapter six, Spiritual Warrior Four, Addiction and the Process of Recovery. He introduces us to this chapter by stating, we would like to dedicate this section to the millions, not billions, no, if not billions, of addicts in the world who suffer from addictions of all types of enticements such as alcohol, drugs, food, sex, prestige, and so on. Basically, every living entity has some type of an addiction. And that addiction controls them in tremendous and unfortunate ways. 
So he states we want to try to address these people along with ourselves because we will all remain addicts until we actually achieve liberation. So that should alert your ears and your mind to listen to what he has to say because every living being on this planet has some addiction. That's why we're still here. And what Bhakti Tita Swami is endeavoring to do through his writings, his techniques, technologies, to get us, help us get out of here. Remember we had the chapter on the perfect escape. So many pointers he's given us. So he begins this chapter after that wonderful introduction to alert you. Don't just start thinking about your neighbor, or your brother, or your sister. We're all included in this addiction, although some are more addicted than others. And this can even help you understand what may be going on with that addicted person. He spends some quite a bit of time on the um, uh, Alcohols Anonymous. So he states that materialists are gradually beginning to understand a condition known as spiritual emergency. Now that spiritual emergency can sometimes develop from the transition of consciousness currently taking place all over the world and the planet really and he tells us that for gives an instance of kundalini um, experiences are among, among several causes of spiritual crisis that can happen during a yoga practice when the energies move upward from the spine I remember somebody was trying to um, teach me that yoga, uh, kundalini yoga. By the time I got to trying to breathe in and whatever it was, I said no. And some time before that, I had been taught um, what it was Kripa, Kripa yoga, I think, or something like that. Now I forgot. Kriya yoga. And I was practicing that. It was a spiritual um, new age people, I guess you'd call them. And one time, however, you, when you did with your tongue and you did your breathing and all, all I can say is I went to a place I wasn't very happy <laughs> And I realized I, I, I didn't have assistance with this it was sent to me through the mail or I had gone to a seminar and gotten it or maybe a weekend workshop or retreat and gotten it but I did not like that experience and I stopped I didn't use it anymore so what he's saying and he speaks from experience and knowledge so just try to listen and, and remember where what our goal is if you're studying Krishna consciousness if or any God realization the ultimate goal is love of God and eventually back home back to uh, so he says that certain people have the ability to develop a higher consciousness or develop different perspectives or perceptions. And in many cases, they cannot properly understand or identify these feelings. Many addicts, as well as people in mental institutions, are actually undergoing a spiritual crisis mm -hmm. that they are not able to deal with or properly balance. Mm -hmm. If you recall when we were talking in the depression section about the importance of having 
spiritually or either spiritualist or spiritually orientated counselors and therapists who have studied and been practicing the spiritual discipline mind so that they can help others through the is he bringing it to our attention spiritual crises or have a sense of what's going on he says that a fine line exists between craziness and spiritual insight why because as a person develops a deep level of spiritual insight he or she will no longer relate to the environment in the same way now that sounds like a very drastic thing but i'm sure any of you out there who started chanting or met a spiritual master or read a book by Srila Papa, there was a shift in consciousness and we're going to be talking more about that and after doing that you your perception was different in the material world now he's talking about extremes where they end up maybe in, you know on psychiatric water and they have no help or guidance around them and he calls it a fine line between craziness and spiritual insight and a lot of times people on a spiritual path or endeavoring will say i think i'm going crazy i don't understand what's going on that's because we're shifting and that mind has a heck of a time letting go of old patterns and it, it's really difficult the, the, he's talking about a person now that you know it no longer relates to the um uh, environment in the same way as they did before they began to develop some spiritual insight so the person will see and think differently and in some cases if he cannot balance these realizations he might even behave like an insane person psychologists and psychiatrists will have to address this phenomenon more and more in the near future as people who have contact with extraterrestrial terrestrials or who have had some stimulating experience simply cannot integrate these experiences into their consciousness mm -hmm. Some people might even have spiritual experiences that cause them to lose basic awareness of the body and to feel energized in a seemingly unnatural way. Do you see how he's bringing pictures to us that maybe we've seen, maybe we've heard about, but practical things to be mindful of and thoughtful of as you're in growing spiritually endeavoring to be more spiritual or you with somebody who is or you see certain behavior it can give you some insight so this isn't just you know book readings this is to help us in fact he says here that actually one of the subtle prerequisites for the serious spiritualist or transcendentalist is the development of a certain amount of disgust for the basic mundane life and again you yourself or maybe others as you begin to study this particular philosophy you begin to see things differently and know that the old pattern of doing things or being you don't want anymore so as long as the person thinks of orthodox material life as so grand and wonderful he or she will never be able to excel or advance spiritually and i want to take you 
this, I read this today, and it's the last section of this chapter. But we'll get back to it when we get there. But let me share this with you the way he put it in words. Because we're going to be moving ahead with this addiction uh, theme of his. But again, to, I don't know, let me read it and you'll see, maybe understand what I'm saying. This isn't just about those people out there. It's about helping those people out there or this person right here, yourself. He says, it is very important for us as aspiring spiritualists to constantly try to help others in their process of spiritual growth. So spiritual growth is not an isolated thing. Ooh, look at what I'm doing. I'm growing. No. It's about I'm having this experience. I'm studying this. I'm reading this. I'm chanting this. And I want to share it with you. So he says, it's to try and help others in their process of spiritual growth rather than just trying to protect or save ourselves. By understanding some of this information which you'll be hearing, we might find ways to help a person through a spiritual crisis resulting from higher energies that they do not know how to process. So you're going to be learning something that you can use. Recognizing spiritual emergencies can also help us as we begin to acquire higher visions and have contact with higher realms because it will help us understand this seemingly insane. If a neophyte has a chance to associate with a higher spiritual being or carry of higher spiritual energy, some of that energy will spill over onto them. I just felt I wanted to share that with you. So it, it's about not just self, self-salvation. It's about learning, growing, practicing, applying what you're learning in your life and understanding that you do go into spiritual emergencies or you may be pretty balanced and someone else may not. So hearing these points and being mindful, you can be of help. Um, what was it we had... Uh, and something came and left my mind. If it comes back, I'll give it to you. So the author continues, such a person will have tremendous limitations because he or she will always have the desire to align with the basic objects of sense gratification and the basic material environment that stimulate the senses. He also now gives us a quote from Bhagavad Gita 2.44, the translation. It states, Krishna speaking, in the minds of those who are too attached to sense, <coughs> excuse me, sense enjoyment and material opulence, and who are bewildered by such things, the resolute determination for devotional service to the Supreme Lord does not take place. Hmm? So he's telling us, you can't be too detached to the sense enjoyment and this whole material, temporary prison we're in. Now, it, it, he says, such a person will have tremendous limitations. Why? Because he or she will always have the desire to align with the basic objects of sense gratification. 
and the basic material environment. That stimulates senses. Now often, people who feel disturbed by the material atmosphere are the best candidates for spiritual life because they have taken extreme measures to make a conscious shift or they made the consciousness shift without keeping a balance. If these people receive proper guidance, their crisis can actually function as a platform from which they can develop higher understanding. You notice he states here, if these people receive proper guidance, you know he tells us in Bhagavad Gita, except one has a, a spiritual master, he can't make it through. You notice how, remember how he spoke to Arjun, who had accepted him as a friend. But as he began to teach, Arjun realized he was his teacher and he was ready to learn. So people must receive proper guidance. And as he's telling this to us as we're reading, so that if we have or we, we feel we're going through these consciousness changes, we can get to a temple or to an authority that we know or a higher level person, conscious person, to help us balance. I'm having a spiritual emergency, help me. And prayfully, they'll understand partially what's going on. So some people, he reminds us that some people underwent various types of spiritual emergencies in the 60s. Remember, those of you who were around then. Due to their use of psychedelic drugs. And what resulted from no psychedelic drug? It resulted in certain mind-altering experiences that may have stimulated their spiritual pursuits. May have made them think, oh, there is something greater than me, or, you know. Now, also, although some of these experiences did allow people to connect with their inner faculties, we still do not place any value on artificial stimulants. We are in no way encouraging people to take any type of drug in order to develop their psychic abilities. But, we recognize that such experiences did act as a catalyst for some people to pursue an alternative or spiritual lifestyle. Now, if we look at the type of person who turns to such stimulants, we will often find someone already pursuing a spiritual lifestyle. Now, in this sense, it is not really the drug itself that makes the change. Rather, it is a particular type of consciousness that wants alternatives and searches for the ecstasy. Hmm? The consciousness. What are you desiring? What is your desire? Now, he tells us that actually if we look at some of the ways in which people try to intoxicate themselves, we will see an insatiable appetite for satisfaction. People, people are seeking any possible method that will help them make a shift out of their usual mundane consciousness and state of suffering. 
And we know this world is a miserable place. Krishna has told us over and over. It's in our scriptures. So there has to be suffering. And others are looking for a change or a shift in that. People will find all types of ways to intoxicate themselves. Now this was new to me. He states, in some places, people even get high from licking toads. When one licks the toad, it reacts by emanating certain chemicals to protect itself. This chemical affects the person in such a way that it creates an altered state of consciousness. What is this? People are looking for ways to intox any kind of way to intoxicate themselves. He says other people sniff glue and even eat mushrooms to attain an altered state. Now, of course, such intoxications not only affect the mind, but they also affect the body and create a dependency. Alcohol is usually a fermented and rotten drink <laughs> that people put, and people put this substance into their bodies in order to get some stimulation. When he makes it sound so bad, how can you go out and sit at the bar or friends say, come have a drink? Eh? It's really, if you're listening, it, it can shift, make a shift, or you can help others make a shift by having these kinds of examples or realizing somebody else has said it, even though you may have thought it. People also are intoxicating themselves by drinking fluids used to embalm bodies. Just consider the whole consciousness that goes along with such an activity. But ultimately, we all just want to develop higher consciousness, which is our natural right. Which again, if we go back to Bhagavad Gita, second chapter, he's telling our truth who he really are, who the, the, the your spirit soul, and he describes that spirit soul. And we learn as we study, we are eternal spiritual souls. That's our true identity. That's our natural right. And if that's who we really are, then definitely we want to develop that higher consciousness as a spiritual being. We're part and parcel of the whole. But this material energy and material world can cover that up if we not don't have strong determination as he mentioned in the first part. So we see that practically everyone wants ecstasy or greater experiences in some form. Now since we understand that life must involve something greater than just the normal patterns of material life. And since we know that we have not yet attained such experiences, we feel a deep sense of dissatisfaction. Some people feel so empty that they will find all types of artificial means to get the quick fix or immediate stimulation. Either they take the drug or they align themselves with some other type of dependency that can temporarily satisfy them. For instance, sometimes a person will feel so unloved that they take shelter of food to compensate. They will just eat and eat due to their feeling of emptiness and the food turns into an addiction. 
sense they want satisfaction and gratification, they will constantly try to acquire the stimulation through the pleasures of the palate and the stomach. Now, if we analyze the different types of addictions, we will see that everyone suffers from some type of dependency. Of course, drugs and alcohol are the most exaggerated forms of addiction. But we should also recognize that we are all motivated by sense gratification in general. Were you able to get in the chat room? Mm -hmm. Who's there? Anybody? Um, Carol, Edgar, David, Bhuvan Mohan, and Anuradha. Oh, wonderful. Welcome, all of you. Edgar, you made it. I'm writing you a letter today, believe it or not. Okay, we move on. I hope you're hearing, get a sense of what this desire for stimulation, and it's coming from a wanting to develop higher consciousness, and that's coming because it's our normal right, and that it's our normal right because we are spiritual beings, eternal spiritual beings, part and parcel of the greatest one to give us ecstasy, the Supreme Lord. Now he tells us we all subconsciously know that real spiritual ecstasies are available and waiting for us. However, we have just not attained them yet. In one sense, no one understands the ecstasy or miracle better than the alcoholic because the bottle of alcohol constantly performs a miracle for them. Mm, the thought of that. Although it simply incarcerates him or her more, it performs the miracle by changing the person's consciousness and giving some artificial temporary relief. In recovery, the person has to substitute the miracle of the bottle or drug with the whole process of recovery in order to access a real miracle. The addict must then take shelter of a higher power in order to help maintain that mood. And if you're practicing spirituality now, endeavoring to chant or read more and still go to school and go to work, we're addicted. We have to go to work. It's not that you don't go to work, but are you so addicted that you forget that there is a higher power? So we can look at this very openly for ourselves as he's describing the symptoms of an addict alcoholic or addict. So the addict must then take shelter of a higher power in order to help maintain that mood. And he's going to go through here with the 12 steps of Alcoholic Anonymous contain many significant and powerful insights about the process of recovery. The process is so extraordinary that if people throughout the world would take advantage of these 12 steps, he says, it could trigger a global mind shift. Addiction is quite serious. And effective treatment is very profound. When properly administered. At different times, people who seem ordinary come into this world with a certain level of empowerment to make a change for millions of people. 
some people who have good intentions use this power to provide programs and projects that can help make major shifts on the planet. Alcoholics Anonymous is an empowered program. The program contains many tenets that can allow people to gain a tremendous shift in consciousness and help them accelerate in their understanding of the self. So again, I'm saying he's, he's, he's giving us points and ideas. If you're studying Krishna consciousness and you're reading Srila Prabhupada's books, and you're endeavoring to chant rounds, that's your medicine. But you have to be consistent, and you're in an environment where, as he says, we're all addicted. And these, hearing these, these, these points and principles as he presents them can help you, the main thing, as he said earlier, help others. Okay? Now, what he's going to do here, we still have time, is to go through the 12 steps with his commentary. And this is what, again, I feel I don't want to leave out what he's put in because it all is going to lead, is leading, if you listen, if you are a spiritualist and have goals, it's good to hear from one who's endeavoring to give us what we need to reach that ultimate goal. So, at, up to this point, are there any questions or comments from anyone? No. Okay, it's okay if I go on with the 12 steps. Everybody still there? <laughs> David said that this is interesting. Okay. Bhakti Chitta Swami, he makes whatever we read interesting doesn't he so let's see where he's going with his commentary you may have heard it i'm sure you've all heard of the 12 steps or alcoholics anonymous and you may not but this is how his viewpoint he says in the process of recovery the addict must first pass through various stages Alcoholics Anonymous provides 12 steps that we will list and examine in more depth. During the first stages, the stage of release, the addict must initially recognize that he or she has an addiction. The first three steps help the addict understand the depth of their problem and ignite their faith in the power of God. Okay? And again, I, my mind was going on its own little trip as far as me listening to this and it's him telling us in the beginning we're all addicted. Some of us are addicted to sleep. We don't get up in time to chant our rounds. And again, we're not realizing that that greater power of God is in the holy name. And if we get up, we make touch with it. That's what just went through my head. So let's go on with, um, but if you think about yourself as an addict, what are you addicted to? What are you trying to break away from? Or what are you getting your sense gratification from that you as yet may not have broken away from to get to a higher consciousness. Number one, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives had become unmanageable. Number two, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Number three, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. Okay, you can relate that to your spiritual life and growing and what's going on. 
His commentary on these first three. The addict must first recognize their position as utter powerlessness in the presence of addiction in order to begin to turn their will over to the care of God. In any process of transformation and growth, including spiritual life, a person must first understand the nature of their problem and accept their situation in order to recognize the areas in which they need to grow. It's interesting as I read these, and I read them a couple of times today, what came through my mind is us, if, and again, I'm speaking to those who are familiar with this Vedic philosophy, Krishna consciousness, and I've been reading and studying, and even if you haven't, the, that you're on this particular channel tonight, there's some spiritual desires there. But what came to me when I finished reading that, how many times are we told who is the controller and the arrangement, arranger of what goes on in our life? And we must recognize that position of utter powerlessness to be the doer and the controller. That's my take on this. And so I'm learning as I'm going with this. I hope you all are too. And this is, um, so he says, as long as people remain comfortable with the basic patterns in their daily lives, which basically involve sense gratification, they will not have a chance to grow sufficiently what will happen? They will remain enslaved in the addiction, which actually strips them of all free will. Unless they turn their will over to God, they will not be able to find relief from the shackles of the addiction. How many of you have been talking about surrendering, reading Saranagati, hearing about it? Hmm? What is your addiction and why haven't you surrendered or turned everything over? He said the addict must proceed by focusing on humility and undergoing an in-depth examination of self and that's a good exercise if you you're here tonight you'll be back maybe next week or you may not get a notebook just based on what you've heard so far and do an in-depth examination of the self maybe some little addiction there there's something you haven't thought about or ignored or didn't even realize it was an addiction until you're hearing okay you can work on that i won't ask you to tell me what it is number four made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves huh okay clean out yourself be honest with yourself do inventory number five admitted to god to ourselves and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs number six we're entirely ready to have god remove all defects of character number seven Humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings. Number eight, made a list of all persons we had harmed 
and became willing to make amends to all of them. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be an alcoholic seeking recovery to do that one. This is for your spiritual growth. Hmm? Changing consciousness, higher consciousness. Number nine, may direct amends to such people whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. Number 10, continue to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Hmm? Personal inventory, you can do that at the end of every day without being an alcoholic, but just being, uh, human in this material world. Take inventory at the end of each day. Who have I hurt? Who have I spoken to harshly? Who have you see? And write it down. And then be ready to admit it. Even if you don't get back to them, it, it would be good as it says here, that you admit to your to God and to others, yourself and to others the nature of what you did wrong. You know, yesterday when I you asked me a question and I turned around and asked you so harshly, I'm really sorry. I had a lot on my mind, or it seems like I answered that question before. But I'm, you see what I mean? And then you are clearing yourself. And if that person doesn't accept that, that's fine. But you, you worked on yourself, you see. So I like this part of take personal inventory and where you're wrong promptly admit it. Um, his commentary on these. Much of the transformation literally happens when alcoholics or addicts meet and discuss their stories. They share themselves they share among themselves the lowest points in their lives in a way that can lead to healing and growth. As a person develops humility, they also understand that they must stop trying to play God. This idea recurs throughout the literature of Alcoholic Anonymous. The addict must give up the conception that he or she is the Godhead and instead realize that his or her personal strength is not sufficient to overcome the temptations. I remember a play came out many years ago. I love the title. What was it? My Arms Too Short to Box with God. Uh, I, I don't remember if I saw it, but I love the title. That was many, many years ago. But it, even that in itself is saying, you gotta surrender at some point. You just can't bite him or be him. That's the whole thing. The author continues by accepting that his or her personal strength and resources are not sufficient. The person will begin to recognize the need for a higher power in order to deal with the addiction. Humility is not an inferiority complex, he tells us that all the time, in which we simply lament over our low position and cannot change. Actually, since we have reached such a low point and have completely lost control of our lives, we want to align ourselves with a higher nature and consciously allow that higher nature to control us. 
Now that, again, studying this teaching and philosophy, it's like, you know, nothing's going right. It's so terrible. People are doing this to me. I can't get this done. And we're, of course, trying to do it ourselves. But what he says here, we align ourselves with a higher nature and consciously allow that higher nature to control us. And if we've been studying this, we're told Krishna is the controller, the arranger. Huh? We're told surrender, and he will show you how to do this, do that. We're told chant his holy name because it's no different from him, and as you chant and continue to chant hearing the holy name, you'll notice things just change in your life. So he's giving this to us, and if you've been studying, you can use this to maybe, to, not maybe, to bring yourself to a higher. He says, the position of humility is very significant in spiritual growth because when a person hits this low point, he or she will feel extremely eager to do whatever is necessary to rise up from the bottom. That's like some people, things are going so bad and finally, you know, I think I'll go back to chanting. <laughs> There's always some reason for whatever. So the last steps in this process involve tolerance and gratitude. Number 11, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understand him. Praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. Having, number 12, having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, we try to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all our affairs. Hmm? The author continues. Because my mind is going, I, 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 we've got it. We've got it. It's all, if you're studying this teaching and philosophy and reading Shil Prabhupada's books and the Bhagavad Gita, Srima, it's all there. But you got to practice it, put it in there. But something like this simply stated can trigger and take you to use what you have or to begin using what you have. He continues, the addict has actually changed his or her external and most importantly internal dialogue. Hmm? Remember we did a whole chapter on internal dialogue some time ago. As a result, the individual is now very active in sharing and helping others to also undergo a transformation. We can do this in Krishna consciousness if we change somebody we're working with somebody or helping somebody we see the shift. And our consciousness changes and theirs will too. As an addict develops the quality, he or she learns to tolerate the other members of the group along with their races, religions, institutions. In this process, addicts also need to stop seeing themselves as victims. Rather, they should recognize that all abusers suffer from different types of sicknesses or weaknesses and that everyone needs help. 
due to their particular illness. Therefore, the recovering addict wants to find ways to help other addicts move through their own suffering and incarceration. And isn't that when I just thought again of um, them encouraging the, the devotees here in the temple to go out on Harinam every Friday night or have programs and have go to Bajans. It's to bring us to what is our, our normal right and to help others hearing and then they see our happiness in doing what we're doing and they want to do the same thing and will begin to do it. The addict should naturally feel gratitude at this point. Do you have an attitude of gratitude? Remember we did that chapter? Oh, we've been through so much with Bhakti Tirtha Plum. If we're practicing and placing it, applying it in our lives, your lives, our lives, my life, can be fuller and richer and more exciting. The addict should naturally feel gratitude at this point, recognizing the mercy given to them. By accessing gratitude, the person will begin to understand, and although they're not really worthy of God's love, grace and intervention, somehow it's manifesting in their lives. This concept will immediately create a shift in consciousness to such an extent that the person who initially considered themselves to be God's gift to the world and their desires to be foremost will begin to see themselves as the servant of humanity and ultimately of God. They will then feel even more eager to appreciate the mercy that God makes available. And here again, he's taking us into serving the Lord, right? It's, it's just so amazing. And I'm going to stop there. And um, this chapter is almost... Oh, oh, no. Next week, we're going to go into one of his meditations again. Remember, he gave us one in the last chapter. It's so wonderful and inspiring. So I'll stop there. Any comment, any question? Everybody's still there? Mm -hmm. Any one word you heard? Those of you on, in the chat room, and even if you're not in the chat room, or sentence or phrase that mm, excites you to want to continue in your spiritual life and your spiritual studies. Now, I know that's a long question. I'm asking. If you want to try and answer that, fine. If not, we will close and say good night. Any comments or questions whatsoever from tonight's class? Who's on there still? Everyone's Everyone. Everyone. Name them again. Bhuvan Mohan, Carol. Who? Carol. Carol. Oh, I didn't. She was there before. Hi, Carol. It's been a while. Edgar. Hi. David. David. Anuradha. 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 He used to be there, right? Is that? It's not a new name. It's a woman. A woman. Mm -hmm. Hi, Hedy Bo. Welcome. And I'm getting ready to let you go. Any comment whatsoever for tonight's class? Bhuvan Mohan says Happy Mother's Day weekend. Mother and Johnny and Hare Krishna and Anuradha says Hare Krishna everyone. Hare Krishna, wonderful. Anybody else? Any comment? Um, Bhak Pinkara says, yes, very interesting. David says, very interesting and good class. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Okay, Hare Krishna. I pray you found something 
to apply in your daily lives and with your friends and family for greater Krishna growth, spiritual growth. So I will now say Hare Krishna, good night. Have a wonderful, blessed week. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and just be sweet and remember mother every day, not just one, one day a year. Okay? And we'll see you next week. Eddie Bull, Eddie Krishna.